trying to think how I got this stuck in my head there. How do you do? How do you do? Okay, it's like it's a pretty best. I can't remember the the word the <laughs> words. It was from a song of the South. Um, and I wasn't originally going to make that the subject of this video, but I guess that's what it's starting with. So okay, we'll just kind of go with the flow. Um, like you know when you get diarrhea. Um. I was thinking just then about how, well, not about the diarrhea part, but um, Song of the South Diarrhea. Um, that's if you're wondering what that is, that's what you hear when you play Another One Bites the Dust backwards. And I guess they were trying to say fun to smoke marijuana. Anyway, Song of the South. The stories being told are racist. I think the way that Disney kind of put it out there, though, made white people look bad, not the black people look bad. And some people might really, really frown at me for saying that, but yeah, the stories were racist. I mean, Br'er Rabbit and the Tar Baby. And Disney has done some things like in Dumbo. Uh, the crow named Jim. And the obvious connotation is around there. Um, you know, Disney has not necessarily had the best past. But when people shove forth Song of the South as being so racist against blacks, I've kind of wondered whether you've watched, and, and it's like, and, and you say that that's the main thing, is this racist message against blacks. I kind of wonder if we've watched this, we watched the same movie or not. Um, to me, Song of the South shows that, you know, hey, um, Everyone should have their own culture, and there are things that are stupid and suck and are lame about white culture. And look how much black culture, in, as, predict, as, as portrayed in that movie, look how po much of a positive effect it had on the boy. Positive effect got him thinking about things. Um, got him questioning things in ways he normally wouldn't. You know, he was initially this really whiny, uh, uh, the kid, uh, the, the boy, the white boy, was this whiny little, uh, I'm gonna cry because I, 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 I got my outfit dirty you know, kind of thing. Um, and black culture kind of got him through that, and they're like... It got it, it got the kid to think. The black guys were the good guys in that movie, the white guys were the ones that sucked. And it's obvious, it should be obvious to anyone watching that movie. So... Um, as I said, the the stories are racist. And some might argue that, well, you know, it's it's showing that that they've they've uh, what would you call that? Uh, CR, I think it starts with a what is that word? Uh, corrupted. Yes, they, they corrupted the boy. And I'm like, no, they didn't corrupt the boy. They, they helped the boy grow up. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, what I was going to originally make this video about was I uh, was going to talk about lenses and stuff. I've been in a very complainy kind of mood. Sometimes it happens. Some, some of it's out of habit. 
and this sort of thing, being able to do this is helpful so I don't do this to people elsewhere. So I use this as my uh, uh, my camera bag, it, and I just take out the plastic part of it, and it just still has the spongy part, and, uh, and then I put lenses in bags, because, you know, I was thinking about how this lens here, this is a, uh, this one here is a Pentax, this is, this is from an old, uh, 35 millimeter camera that we had in the attic, we were probably never going to use again, and this is a, uh, 50 millimeter, uh, uh, lens, and, uh, has an f-stop of two. Uh, the one that you have right here that you're looking at has an f-stop of 1.7. The smaller the f-stop, the faster the lens is how they'll consider it. You know, the, and the faster the lens is the more light it can bring in in a shorter period of time. So, um, now, when you try to do low light situations on uh, like with video and you don't have a lens that can do that, then it tries to use artificial means to turn up the you know, just to get more light in. And that's when you start seeing a, a white noise. You start to see, you know, a, a, just a white noise pattern. Um, so, I mean, on this one, I could go, I could make this go, that's what it is at, at, at 1.7. So I have this, I have, still have this turned down. And the more you have this turned down, the wider the field of view gets. So things that are close and things that are far away, it, it the, the area in which it's still clear is bigger as far as being closer or further away from the camera. So, um, it, when I do have it set all the way up, it, it can, I mean, all, all the, you know, uh, like this, and I change some other settings to, to, you know, make it not so ridiculously bright. Um, it still has a very neat effect. It's one of the things that gives some of my videos that looks, the, the look that it has. Um, so, then there's lenses like this one. This is the one that came with the camera. And as much as I do like that it, you know, goes from, is it 16? I think it's 16 to, uh, yeah, 16 to 50. This goes to 16 millimeter and it has a zoom all the way to 50. But this, this turns infinitely because this is not a real, this doesn't, isn't directly connected to the lens. So when you're trying to adjust, I'll just get, still get this out for it for like, I'm trying to adjust the, the focus. I'm trying to do this so I don't get any like spittle on the, on this back of this. I just think I need to clean that anyway. So whatever. So I'm trying to adjust the focus and I'm going back and forth like this. And just out of me going like this, and this, now this point here is a completely different spot in the focus. So you just have to keep looking and hope you kind of get it right. And if it's just a little wrong and you move it just a little bit, well, now it's too far this way, but how do I get it to, I mean, I've spent like two fucking minutes just trying to adjust something manually on that. And I think that's the idea that a lot of people have in their heads when they think of doing manual focus. On these types of cameras here, you know, it's it's al it's always the same spot. It's always um, you can always rely on it being the same. It's consistent. When you put your finger there, when you put your hand there, and I'm I'm thinking to myself, did I actually put it the same that I had before? I didn't quite. So I need to make that just a little bit more. Do, 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 there. Okay. When you get this close, you have to be really precise about it. So, and I didn't have my glasses on. So, um, but you know, you can always count on this something being the same. It's easy to adjust the focus that way. 
man, I'm thinking about like if they had some, let's simulate, you know, you, you put your, your, your screwdriver in to adjust the heads on a, on a tape deck of some sort. And instead of you actually adjusting it directly, you know, the screw just turns infinitely and it's, it's the same sort of thing. I'd be like, oh no, let me, and it would take me several minutes just to adjust the heads. Um, I kind of feel that way about cars as well. That's the way that all of the, uh, the, the, the acceleration pedals are on cars. They're not connected. Those, are, those haven't, been, haven't been directly connected to a chain connected to, you know, to actually accelerate the engine uh, uh, speed. Uh, 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 it hasn't been that way for, for years. Um, and it, it, it's... I kind of miss being able to just have it directly connected because... It's always going to be the same. The ones they have now, it's not always the same. You can't count on on your pedal doing the same thing every time. So you have to deal with what the computer thinks. You have to get used to how the computer thinks and, and processes the movements. And you have to think about the way the engine responds to the computer. You have to think of it on both ends in order to drive accurate speeds without having to... without it, you know, continually having to back up and, you know, going like that all the time, changing speeds all the time. Um, but... Uh, as far as the a lens, like I mean, I I would love to have a lens that just at least was just at sixteen, you know, put it at sixteen and give me a nice, you know, at least at least two uh, on the f stop, you know, at least two. If you could get it down to like one point two, oh my goodness, that would be awesome. But even just two. Two and having a nice wide view would be nice. I would love that. Um, I would also love to find more lenses that are quirky like this one. Because things that are in focus... I mean, it's a quirky lens. It's a really arty lens. Artsy lens. The center has a different focus than the edges. Right? Now, sometimes I exaggerate that in post-production, right? But... The, the actual focus on this lens, it's, you know, what's, what's, what's clear here, you go to the edges and it's not. In order for that to be clear, you have to go closer on the edges, right? And then it's clear there. And that's how, to me, this lens, when you're like in a crowd of people, it gives a lot more depth to the crowd. And, and I really like that. I, I, again, I wish there were, I could find other lenses that have those same characteristics, but isn't such, uh, isn't so high in, in millimeters, you know? Um, Cause I mean, it's always so zoomed in. Um, I, I, I have to, I mean, I can put my arm all the way out from where I'm sitting and I'm still not touching the lens. I'm still not touching the camera. You know, all, all the way here. Do, do, do. You know, we, 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 right? So, you know, to me, the way that this looks, I should have this look if I was... Yeah, as I bumped the, the microphone. I'd ha I should be about this close to have this look. And, it, it, and that is on that other lens. But that lens doesn't have these characteristics. And it's too damn hard to adjust the fucking focus. Just just on this right here. You know, like, if you have to move... Like, when I go like this, I'm going to be moving forward, which messes up what I want it to focus on. So how do I move it just a little bit more from the point that it's at? Well, you can't. Oh, well, just rely on, on automatic. And I'm like, well, no. No, because then it's going to constantly be moving around. 
And you can try to program it so, well, you know, after it gets a good lock on the on the character, then it will remain focused on just you. Well, no, you'll, you'll still watch it move around, just like on the Amazing Atheist video. You see, you continually see it, the focus kind of, kind of just do this, this little, I mean, he's got it adjusted right for the automatic tracking or whatever. It's better than, than what most people do on this, on, on when they're using automatic functions, but you can still watch it move around, at, you know. Though, you know, his last video, I don't remember that having that problem that bad. Maybe he's figured some more things out. Maybe he has someone behind the camera uh, making sure that, that it's right, and they're adjusting it manually. I don't know. But uh, maybe he got a, a, a more expensive lens, being expensive in the sense of uh, it has a better uh, autofocus system. But... Uh, yeah, I, I'm I'm not a fan of that. I just just let me let me adjust it and it's good, you know. I know how to adjust it. I know what this stuff means. Just let me adjust it and it's good. And unfortunately, I'm a control freak about technology. I am a fucking huge. I'm a biggest fucking control freak when it comes to technology. Um, if if technology if they're not going to let you adjust something, then I'll force adjust something, you know. And, oh, how can you be so arrogant? It's fucking, it's a piece of fucking technology. It's not a person. <laughs> you know, and in some ways we've made technology our slaves. Then some, there's other ways you can look at it and say that we're slaves to our, technolo to our technology. And there's some truth to that too. But, uh, you know, if one really wanted to stretch things... If you're going there, someone could stretch things to say that a slave, uh, uh, someone who owns slaves is kind of, they could stretch it to say, well, they, they're kind of owned by the slaves as well because uh, and you can, you can, there's ways that you could come up with arguments about that, right? Um, I can't think of what they are, but I've heard them before. So there are reasons that people will give and they could really say that they're valid and they, they have a logic behind them and they have they have some reasoning behind them. I disagree, but um, I mean, I disagree as far as saying it like as if it's the rule and not the exception or as if it's the main premise and not the after effect of something. So in this chair, this squeaky chair, um, <laughs> guess I don't know where to go now <laughs> um all right <laughs>